welcome to my channel. This is my little platform where I turn struggling math students into maths masters. And I post videos Tuesdays and Thursdays, so be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification button if you want to know when I post any new videos. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at input and output and really just explain to you how you can apply um, your understanding of algebra and your previous sections to actually make this a lot easier. Um, I'm going to be teaching you sort of simple ways to do the calculations and ways that you can use um, no matter what is being asked of you. And hopefully by the end of this video, video, you will clearly understand how to calculate the input and how to calculate the output. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So let's jump in. We're going to be looking at input and output, as I mentioned. And yeah, I think I'm going to start by just at the very basics so that you can actually understand what input and output actually is. Okay. So essentially, input is replacing a variable with a numerical value. The value is called an input. The answer generated from inserting the input is called the output. And let me show you what it is that I mean. So I want you to think of your input as being your deep independent variable and your output, your, um, your dependent variable. In other words, the output will always depend on whatever the input is. Okay, so if you think of a car production line, at the start, your input will be all the different parts, right? And the output will be dependent on all of the different parts put together. So if it's a Toyota, you're going to have Toyota's parts in the input. And then your output would then be your Toyota car. Right? And But if you put in a Toyota, you're not going to get a Ford outcome. Okay? So I want you to sort of see it as input and would be what is actually going in and then output is your answer dependent on what went in okay now into what <laughs> so into the equation or into the rule so your input goes into your equation and then the answer is your output right so in this video you need to know how i'm going to be teaching you how to Take your input, right, and if they give you inputs, use the equation to calculate the outputs. Or if they give you the output, use the output and the equation to calculate the input. So you must be able to, after this video, be able to calculate the input and the output. But now, let, now that we actually understand what input and output is, I want to actually show you how this works. Right, so... Have a look at these three values. So let's say these are our input values, 2, 0, and negative 2, right? Then we are going to put this into our equation, which in this case is y is equal to 2x plus 1. In this equation, the x represents the input, the y represents the output. Because whatever I place into x, do you see that y answer will determine whatever you put in here by x, right? So that's why y is your output. So if I take 2 and I put it into my equation, what, do, what answer would I get, right? That whatever answer I get would then be considered my output. So let's actually do this calculation. So the, the steps that you would use for this type of calculation is the steps that I taught you in the video on substitution, okay? So wherever you see the x, you are going to place the 2 in the equation. So you'll have y is equal to, so you see this is the equation, 2 times x, but now we're placing the 2 there, right? So it's 2 times 2 plus 1, because this is from the equation. So this is essentially 2x plus 1. So I've placed the input, which is the 2, by the x through process of substitution, and my answer I get is 5. So that means 5 is my output. 
Okay, so you see how this works. Let's do another example. So I have zero that's going into the equation. So you see here, I write the equation down, but instead of writing x, I'm going to place the input value. And then my answer for this is then going to be 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. So my output then for 0 is 1. Okay, hope you're sort of seeing and getting the hang of this. The last one. So again, I'm placing negative 2 there where I would have had x by using the process of substitution. So 2 multiplied by negative 2 is negative 4 plus 1 gives me negative 3. So that is then the output for negative 2. So negative 2 is the input. y plus 2x plus 1 is the equation or the rule. And y is then the output. Okay. So this is pretty much teaching you how to calculate the output. You agree with me? Because we've used the input, we've done the equation, and we were able to calculate the output. So let's look what's next. Now we have to calculate the input. So what if they give you a case where you have the outputs and the rule, but you don't have the inputs? In other words, what is supposed to go in here by x to make sure that I get an answer negative 1? What should go in here by x to make sure that I get an answer of 2? And what should go in here by x to get an answer that goes? Um, that will give me 7. So the method that we're now going to use to calculate input. So to calculate the outputs that I've shown you in the previous slide, we are using substitution, right? And I have a whole lesson on how to substitute. But in this case now, we're going to use the process of equations. So we are going to be solving for x, okay? So how do we actually do this? So let's start with a negative 1. Okay, now would you agree with me that the negative 1 we know is y, right? So in the formula, I'm going to put negative x plus 4, which is the equation, is equal to negative 1, is equal to y. So this is my y. So we need to use the process of equations to find x. So we need to know what actually was substituted in by x in order to get the output of y, which is negative 1. So this is how you will start it. And then you will use all the steps that I taught you in the equation lesson to actually solve for x. Right, so here I'm taking this 4 over because I want x alone. And when I take anything over, I change its sign. Right, so this is minus 1, minus 4. Then I simplify the right-hand side because minus 1, minus 4 gives me minus 5, right? So I've got minus x equal to minus 5. Then I need to get x alone. So this is negative 1 times x. So if I take it over, it's going to be negative 1, negative 5 divided by negative 1. So in other words, okay, let me just like slow this down quickly for you. This is negative 1 times x. But we want the negative 1 over because we just want x alone, right? So if I take the negative over, I will then say minus 5 and I'll do the opposite, right? So this negative 1 is times x. So if I take it over, I'm going to divide by the negative 1. This is all sort of broken down into clear details in my equation lesson. So if you're struggling with this, please go back to that one and have a look there. But here, my answer is then positive 5. So my input is then 5. So I put 5 in here by x, and my output would then be negative 1. So let's do the exact same, but now with 2. So minus x plus 4 is equal to 2, because this is my output. I take the 4 over, right? I simplify. Then I take the negative 1 over. And my answer is 2. Okay, exactly the same steps. So that means my input then is 2. Okay, so again, remember in this lesson I said I will explain to you how to calculate input and output. In input, we're using the methods of substitution. And then to calculate, sorry, to calculate our output, we are using substitution. And to calculate our input, we're using our equations method.
Okay? So, the last one, this is equal to 7. The equation equals to 7. And again, take over the 4, take over the uh, simplify, take over the negative 1, and my answer is negative 3. So, that means my input is negative 3. Okay, so let's do another example. Okay, so here's another example. And it says complete the flow diagram. So they give us the rule, they give us our inputs, and they give us our outputs, and we must complete this. So that means here's an A, B, and a C that we need to complete. Okay, so what I want you to do in these cases is first make sure you understand what is being asked. If I look at A, do you see that A is an output, right? So already my brain goes, okay, if I calculate output, I have to substitute. So I'm going to take my 8 and I'm going to substitute it in by my x, right? So in order to find a, you're then just going to say 8 where the x is, and then you're going to simplify and you'll find that the answer is 3. So that means a in our flow diagram is equal to 3. Okay, now let's calculate B. Now, B, again, is now an input. And the method we use to calculate input is the equation method. So first, I'm going to write down my formula, and where I see Y, I'm putting the negative 1. And now I'm going to solve for X. Now, again, you're going to get the, the you want to get X alone, but first you're going to move over the 5. So this is positive, it goes over, it becomes negative, so that's negative 6. Simplified equals to negative x over 4. Then I want to take this 4 and pull it over. So if this is x divided by 4, I want to say negative 6 multiplied by 4. Right? So that will then give me negative 24. And then I want x alone. So again, just like we showed in the other example, we're going to divide by the negative 1. And therefore x is equal to 24. So in our um, flow diagram, our B is equal to 24. Okay, so I hope you're getting the hang of this now. I know the equation section can seem a little bit tricky, but really go through the lesson that I give you that I've created on equations, and I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to understand and do this easily um, if you master that, or if you are at least if you are struggling with a section now. Okay. Then the last one, C, is again an output. So again, we're just going to substitute the negative 4, and our answer is then 6. Okay, so that's another example. So now I'm going to give you an exercise to see if you can do this, okay? So I want you to pause this video, and I want you to write down this exercise, and I want you to try and do this exercise, right? So you have to calculate the missing values in this flow diagram and then once you are done unpause the video and then let's mark and see how well you did okay so hopefully you feel confident about your answers and hopefully you did this again i'm going to emphasize grade 8 how important it is that even if you feel like you understand everything i did perfectly you are only going to know if you understand it by doing the calculations yourself. So please do pause the video and do try the exercises that I do in the videos first so that you can actually see how well you are doing. Okay, so let's mark. So the answers for this one, A, you had to use the process of substitution and your answer would have been negative 2. B, you would have used the process of equations and your answer would then be 0. Okay, now remember when you're doing the equations, if you, if you want to find um, x from x squared, you would then have to square root it. Okay, so just remember that. Right, then by C, your answer would be 3. D, your answer through substitution would be 22. So again, I would have put the 5 in there, that would give me 25. Minus 3 is 22. And then E, you'll put the 8 by the x squared, and you'll get the answer of 61. So yeah, I hope you got I hope you got most of these answers correct. Again, if you didn't, don't panic about it. Remember, the more practice you get, 
the more the easier these type of things will get for you as long as you are able to identify where you are going wrong so that you can actually rectify those mistakes before you get to a test or in an exam so i hope you found that video helpful and if you did please give it a thumbs up and add a comment in the comment section letting me know how you feel about this content and then also a reminder to keep an eye out for when i will be adding worksheets that you can work through in order to practice the work that you've actually learned in this video all right so thank you again so much for watching and for supporting my channel and i will see you in the next video bye guys